What is up everybody? This is my sixth year of disc golf, second year of content creating, and this is everything that is in my bag. If you watch the channel religiously, you already know everything that's in my bag, but if you're new to the channel and or can't read, this is for you. Starting with putters. The putting putters that I'm rocking this season are some 300 firm PA3s. Nothing special other than the fact that I normally putt with 350G, but 300 firm is the new 350G. So this is what we're rocking. I've been putting with these for probably five years now. Very comfortable in the hand, a little bit of a micro bead, but they're putters, you know, nothing special. Throwing putters, I have three. Five if you count approach discs, but the shortest one off the tee you could say is my 350G PA3. And this used to be my putting putter, it's just turned into my throwing putter and I only use it for like 200 feet and in. This is typically just a standstill approach disc that I'll throw right at the basket. I'll also bust it out for the occasional forehand. It's the only putter that I can actually forehand because for whatever reason, it just feels very comfortable in the hand. It might have something to do with me putting with it all the time. I'd never really throw this off the tee. If I am throwing off the tee, I've got a proxy and an envy. I feel like these complement each other pretty well. The proxy is now straight to understable, whereas the envy is straight to overstable. Anything from that 250 to 300 feet, this is what I'm going to. If it gets a little windy out there, that's that's when I bust out my A2s. I have a 500 Vinyl Makala A2. This thing is absolutely overstable. The beefiest thing ever. Perfect for crazy windy situations. Just a little less overstable. We have my 750 A2. But regardless of wind, anything inside 250 that I need a forehand with, these are my go-to. I feel very confident approaching with these, especially with the forehand, because I can look right at the target, throw it out wide. I know it's gonna finish. And then for me, the beefier, the better. Sometimes I have a problem where I'll roll over my wrist. This Vinyl Makala is so overstable that it will hide that mistake because it's just going to dump. But those are my approach discs. And the A2s are some of the longest lasting approach discs I've had. I think they're actually the only approach discs that I've rocked. Moving on to the mid-ranges. I'm not a big mid-range thrower guy because I typically throw mid-ranges anywhere from like 280 to like 320. But then at that point, I kind of find myself like disking down on a fairway driver and just throwing that. But sometimes when you're in the woods, you do need a fairway just to eliminate some of that skip that you get. But starting with my most flippy disc, we have the Midnight Prowl 2. This is Kyle Klein's signature series meta origin that you can just hit out wide. This thing will slowly drift right the entire way. This is a fantastic disc for the woods. If you want to hit a straight shot, just hit this dude on some hyzer, flips up flat. I love throwing this thing. A little less flippy, just more dead straight. We have the Horizon MD1. I'm rocking two right now because I like to beat one in, keep one a little fresh. You'll kind of notice that throughout the bag, but I absolutely love throwing this thing just nice and straight right at the basket, glides for days, then has that slow finish at the end. I'll even throw these things up to about 350, depending on OB or water behind the basket or something like that if I'm worried about my fairway going too far. These two are neck and neck for my favorite mid ranges. There's something nice about just a hyzer flip to flat and then also something just throwing an arrow right at the basket. But the most overstable fairway I have in the bag is my pyro. This dude is board flat, very overstable, but not too overstable where you can't throw it. I feel bad because I always throw the deflector on the bus, but if you've thrown one of those, they're crazy overstable. They're perfect for 40 mile an hour winds. But if you don't have a 40 mile an hour wind, there's basically no reason to throw it, in my opinion. But this thing you can throw in the wind, or if it's not windy, it's just a perfect overstable mid. I'll even forehand approach this as well. If I need something that goes just a little bit farther than my A2, I'm forehanding this thing. I just recently started forehanding mid ranges, and this is the only overstable mid that I'm very comfortable at throwing on forehand. So that's my mids. Now we get into the fairway department. Lots of fairways. And by the way, I build my bag up to where I can play any course. I like very flippy discs to very overstable discs. I keep about two of each in there. That way I don't constantly have to switch things in and out. I can just take my bag, pull up anywhere and play and feel very comfortable. Starting with the most understable, we have my rhythms. The rhythm is a perfect disc for me for those 350 foot slow turnover shots. Just kind of hit it out wide left. It's just gonna hold the turn the entire way. It's the fairway version of that origin that I was talking about earlier, especially in the woods. If I need a straight shot that goes really far, hit this guy on some hyzer, flips to flat. For whatever reason, I just feel so comfortable hitting gaps on hyzer. So anytime I'm in the woods, I'm busting these guys out. With these two, there's not one that's more flip than the other. I just keep going back and forth between them because they're both sick looking, but I need to start beating one in and keeping one fresh because it's gonna get very flippy, especially with how I play in the woods. Your boy be hitting some trees. Now for my dead straight flying fairways, like the Horizon MD1, we have the FDs. I have a D-line FD and then a meta FD, just one in the premium, one in the baseline. This thing is getting pretty flippy. I can just hit it out flat. It's gonna have a slow drift to the right. 
and then finishes back flat. Same with my Chroma FD, except it has a little bit of fight at the end. These are anywhere from like 350 to 370. Just a notch above that in stability, I've got the Royal Rage 2, and then your boy's Vlog Drop Neo Origin. This one's brand new. This one's getting seasoned in a little bit. Anywhere from 350 to 370, I'm hitting this dude flat and out wide. It's gonna stay straight for a while and then have that nice finish at the end. This one does the same thing, but this is gonna be my one that I beat in, where this one's gonna stay a little bit new. The Instinct, by the way, is my my favorite fairway driver. That's why I put the vlog drop stamp on one of these. I love them. Anytime anybody asks me what's a fairway that I get, I always point them towards the instinct. It's also very beginner friendly. If you're a beginner, this is going to be your overstable fairway driver. You don't need to be throwing distance drivers. Trust me. I don't need to be throwing distance drivers. And then last but not least, you got to have some beefcake fairway drivers. And that's where we have the FD3. I have a Metal Flake FD3 and an X Out Doombird 4. Beefy as hell. This thing is so overstable. I love it. I can trust it. If it's windy out, that's when I'm using it. Other than that, this is my workhorse in the forehand department. I am forehanding this thing all over the place. I can hit it hard, flat. It's just going to cook straight, dump at the end. The Doombird 4 does basically the same thing. It just dumps at the end, if you know what I mean. Very overstable. If there's any flexing involved in a line, I'm flexing with this one because I know it's going to be able to fight out of it. This will tend to hold that line a little bit more before flexing out, but I absolutely love this thing. I fear the day that I lose it because it has this sick little peace sign stamp on there. It's always my outro piece. Love it. Absolutely love it. Then last but not least, everybody's favorite, we have the distance drivers. On the slower end of the distance drivers, I have two PDs, a Dark Mall 2, and then this Huck Lab Sea Line PD. As you've always seen, this is my workhorse. The stamp is starting to fade. I like these for whenever there's OB involved and I don't want to go distance driver, whether there's OB long or something like that. Right at 375, 380 is where I feel most comfortable throwing these. This one is very straight, then finishes at the end. This one is straight for about three and a half seconds and then it just dumps. In very windy situations is when I'll throw this, or if I'm just throwing huge spike hyzers, I love throwing it because it's just going to knife down to the ground exactly where I want. I'll do that with this one occasionally too if I need something to really move left, but because it's just a tad flippy, when I throw it on hyzer, it starts to flip up and then that's what's carrying me off to the left. I don't typically throw these that often though. Um, it's certain holes I can think of off the top of my head, but it's very dependent on if I really need distance control. If distance control isn't involved, then I'm smashing on some time lapses. I've got three time lapses, all different stabilities. The most overstable is the Proto. Very overstable. This is my max distance overstable driver. So if I need to get as much distance as I can, but let's just say there's OB right the entire way, then I'm throwing this because I know it's going to be able to go far, but then dump at the left, I'll have no fear of this thing turning over. If I wanna flirt with it just a little bit, then I'll go with this one. This is the lab second time lapse. The issue with it is I can get an extra 20, 30 feet out of it, but it starts to turn a little bit. So in case I'm feeling juiced one day, just fresh off the tee, I might end up turning this into that OB, so that's what I worry about, but I do get a little bit of extra distance out of it. But when max distance is available, you're out on a golf course, there's no OB in sight, then I'm reaching for this stock time lapse. This thing has a lot of turn out of it, but then still finishes at the end. These two I'm getting to about 420, 430, easily hitting 450 with this. But like I said, only if OB is not in sight because it does turn. So in case I hold the turn a little bit longer than I'm wanting it to, I don't risk this one with out of bounds. When you've got the tailwind and you need something a little bit more flippy, OB is still not in sight. Then I've got my Enigma. I had a Color Glow DD3 in the bag that was ridiculously understable. I loved it for tailwind shots, but it just became way too flippy. So now I'm throwing in an Enigma for this year. This is my first time ever bagging the Enigma. It too has a vlog drop stamp on it, but this one is just a bomber. It's going to hold that turn for as long as possible before finding out of it. I can get this up to like 460, 470, even 480, but at that point I'm losing like accuracy. I'm just kind of nuking one out there, but I just love that this holds the turn for forever and then fights out at the end, especially for tailwinds. You know, tailwind makes your disc a little bit too overstable so this time lapse ends up starting to fly like this time lapse and so on and so forth down the ladder but this guy bombs easily my farthest flying distance driver in the bag and then to wrap that off i like to keep my forehand discs separate from my backhand discs fd3s for example forehand and forehand only if i need a backhand that's when i'll throw the pds but for forehands in the distance driver compartment we have some c-line dd3s they're not too beefy they're not too understable i can just nuke these anywhere from like 370 to 425 that's how i'm going with these dd3s very comfortable in the hand 
hand. The DD3 is a disc that I've bagged for a very long time, probably coming up on three years now. Just recently popped them out for these time lapses though, but they are staying in the bag for four hands. But yeah, that's all of my discs for the in the bag. If you want to support me in any way other than subscribing or liking the video, I now have an online store where you can get some back nine snack time merch along with some of these discs. More discs to come. Thank you guys very much for watching and I will see y'all tomorrow. Peace.